There's a lot of music in this show that we intended to be a little bit off kilter, or sometimes a lot bit off kilter. We didn't want to make safe music ever. I thought, this is just a strange enough composer for this film. And now we're making a film about the life story of Carbon. We're giving Carbon a personality and going on her journey and looking at the world through her point of view. We're trying to, to break apart our stereotypes around this element that everyone's talking about. Okay, do you want to roll click for me on 5M2? Everybody make sure you've got click. This is really a magical moment in the process of making a film. We're hearing the, the actual music for the first time. The biggest question was what does Carbon sound like. The beauty of Carbon and the challenge of Carbon is that it's everywhere. And kind of anything that's alive can be the sound of Carbon. How's that? Best Thursday of my life, thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. Shall we okay. move on then? I've never thought of myself as, as the chameleon composer, but we're going to Mongolia, we're going to Australia. We're seeing ways that carbon is the bringer of life, the bringer of death. So we go a lot of places, so we have to follow musically a lot of places. Carbon Rising is such a beautiful and surprising piece. This is carbon's journey through the purest air of the Southern Hemisphere off the Southern coast of Tasmania. I think what we were trying to do with, with Carbon Rising is establish this sense of flight. How do you do that musically? The answer was to bring in the vocalist Red's personality that she pours into the cue. Hmm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I super love it. I was like, it makes no sense. I love it. She saw that cue and wasn't like, oh my god, John doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, actually, Greg, can you give us another one? She saw it as a challenge and like, whoa, this is a little bit out there. And she's just the type of person who's just kind of tickled by that, I think. Happier? Crushed. <laughs> uh, like the idea of crushing staccato, like that's a thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> so one of the most important pieces of music in the whole film is called All We Can Lose. This is based around an interview with a climate scientist named uh, Joelle Gerges. And she is someone who in her professional life looks at the evidence of rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and models the future climate. This is what she does for a living. This is actually a scientist's worst nightmare. The, the very thing that we've been trying to talk to people about is actually unfolding right now. The all you will lose cue, it's an extremely chaotic cue. It's almost incoherent sometimes. That cue was especially emotional for me because there's a lot of forest fire in it, there's a lot of smoke, and I wrote it in a forest fire. <laughs> we were right in the thick of the worst air in the, in the world. So let's pick it up at 65, folks, and let's just see what the heck happens. Okay. When I I'm writing, all I have to do is write until that, the feeling of the music feels like the way I feel. And being in a forest fire, I mean, it was pretty easy. In some ways, a violin, it, it behaves so much like a synthesized version of a human voice. 
I feel, feel the same way about piano. Traditional instruments that are still human technological achievements somehow get a pass as organic sometimes. And I think that sort of really relates to the cute. There are all these natural disasters that seem organic happening in the queue, but really if you dig into them, there's a human reason for them. so easy to over-egg the music, to go too far with the music and to push the emotions further than our character is taking them. But Jonathan finds the right place to be. Yeah. Nita? Yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Oh, it's working for me. Oh, yeah. Show you recording now, Hal? <laughs> yeah, we're very happy. Bravo, everybody. Thank you so much, Hal. Yeah, Thank what you. a cue. Four minutes to break, Hal, so... Let's try and bang out another one for him. The last thing we see in this film is not Carbon's eternal epic journey out to the universe after the end of our solar system. That comes before. The last thing we see in this film is, in a sense, the most universal image we could give the audience. That's the birth of a child. Jonathan's suggestion was we should leave the conventional film music behind here at the end of the film and have a song. Wow. Technology. I wanted to work with Hannah on this scene about this birth, and it just so happened the weeks after we talked about it, she had a baby. The cycle of life and birth was so present for her. Being a, being a mom is like the craziest drug that I've ever taken. Wow. Yeah. The sleep, the combination of sleep deprivation and just like pure unadulterated love is like, whoa, see you later. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. That's cool. Well. Woven inside you before and behind you I make, I take, I build I die in the shadows Wow, these are good takes. Intimacy is such a huge part of, of the score. We decided to put the mics very close. Humming here? Mm. And what you hear is all the little mistakes, fingers sliding up and down. You hear breathing in and out. In the start of your journey, feel me in your breath. Know me in the water. It would have been such a shame, especially in such a human cue, to clean it up. And, and make it sound pristine and possibly synthetic. Okay. All right, from the top, I'm ready. I'll be there in the end. Feel me in your palms. There's so much range of musical style and genre in this film. And so just as transgressive as our story was, we needed the music to help us. And that's why Jonathan was the composer for this project. It's so funny to do so much in front of one computer and then all of a sudden you get to work with just the best engineers and musicians in Canada. That's a total treat.